right, a time for a Warwick game. Uh, this is going to be a game where I'll show you a nice and easy Warwick strategy, especially good in low elo because it gets disrespected more there. This is going to be low elo as well, by the way. I'll show you a nice way that you can easily climb. Uh, he is, I, I would like recommend Warwick as one of the favorites definitely to, uh, to deal with low elo especially. Because uh, it's all around your blood hunt, essentially. That's the strategy here. So it's going to be, how can you play around this properly? And how can you abuse this skill correctly to be able to just win the game for free, essentially? Like, it, people will disrespect your blood hunt a lot. The higher you go, the less they'll disrespect it. So that is something you do have to keep in mind. Uh, starting off, if you're going to go start bot side for like a leash, for a good leash, I would recommend just starting with your W as well. Because as soon as the target gets below a certain percentage, you'll get the extra value from your dub, uh, from your W's blood hunt for the extra attack speed, as you can see. It goes pretty quick. Uh, if you are going to solo start, you can just go Q if you want, and that will uh, that will be fine as well. You want to slide something early on Warwick, because it puts it like lower in your blood hunt passive faster. Kill the big one first, and then while we kill the small ones, those will basically just die. And you just do like auto attacks to finish this off. Um... Technically, blue would be a faster start for a clear, but I just, you know, went for the bot lane start, got a double leash. Basically, when you're doing raptors or when you're doing your AoE camps, you want to try to split your damage. As you can see, I'm just auto-attacking all of them, applying some red buff burn to all of them, making sure all of them get a bit low so they get, like, use usefully killed by my pet and stuff, right? So I can kind of kill them at the same time, and that's one. Hit level three first before you go, though. And then we move. That's the first blood hunt we get. I wouldn't recommend moving before you hit at least level three. So three camps are required. But you see something here, you simply just move. Pop the E. Go through by holding your Q down. That's one. And then just hold Q. He wasn't gonna flash. Okay, I guess I didn't have to hold it then. Flash after him. And he's dead. That's one. As soon as you have something you react to, you instantly reset. Because if you react without clearing your entire jungle here, you have to reset quickly. This order, this will be in order to make sure you don't get uh, absolutely demolished by a counter jungle. Okay, the Shivana decided to clear her top side and then didn't invade my top side, which is good for me. So the the defense here is basically just the top side. Okay, this is one of those again where I could just go mid because we're blood hunt active. Like, as soon as you have blood hunt targets, you can just move for them. Like, this this Vyga right here. I just kind of move around in a loop so I will actually be able to get a decent gank angle instead of just running straight at him, of course. Get the E down. Did not use my brain cells, and I thought I had flesh, so I'm a dumb <laughs> I'm a dumbass. <laughs> Don't worry about me. I was about to flash E on him, and I just realized, like, the moment I was about to do that, I didn't have flesh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man okay i just I, it's my first game today okay just cut me cut me some slack it's fine <laughs> all right smite early on blue to get it lower for the blood hunt passive faster this is not really diveable so we're not gonna go react to that blood hunt this is also not really doable at the moment my re doesn't have any hp or mana so in situations like this you just don't want to go for those blood hunts always try to assess if the target is like a viable one to go for Gonna be this is gonna be a very hard dive, so it's not necessarily on something I'm looking for. So we're just gonna keep clearing for a bit. Keep putting points in W. Ari is sticking around a little long there. These these are targets we cannot react to. The, the wave position isn't very good. Ari overextended. Okay. I can't run at him here because if I run straight at him, he obviously will just walk away. If he sticks around though. It could be good. Okay, he's recalling there. You see the heavy dot there, so that's why we know know why he's recalling there. The Shivana is most likely going to end up going for Draken, so I'm just going to simply do the cheese. Run in behind him right here. Perfect. He has the Blood Hunt on him. We pop the E. Fear him. And then after the fear, we just finish him off with the uh, auto attack Q for the reset. Get the, Titanic, uh, get the press the attack proc and move on. She's obviously doing dragon, we knew this for a fact. And so we have the Blood Hunt going towards the Vigar here to be able to play. Hopefully the team responds. I should be fairly strong already. Okay, Shivana's just going mid, so I'll just go dragon. I could respond to this, however, I, just an objective is an objective. So we're definitely going to do that. We're going to observe here. That's good. See someone in here, this is the Shivana. 
I put my Tiamat there because I didn't have vision to actually auto attack her on the spot. Wait for the guy to shove the wave. Good. And we move on. Use that for a bit of damage reduction. And then we just move through this again. Right there. All I did, all I'm doing here is I'm just reacting to Blood Hunt. You can see where targets are in the Blood Hunt by just observing like the heavy dot. Like if you see like a dark red color. You know, that is a good, uh, that, that's where they're standing. Where you see like the, the, the X appearing or whatever that you just saw, right? That is how you see where they are. And because I couldn't get auto attack and she was most likely recalling in that bush, I used my Tiamat the, the moment I got in melee range for it or in Tiamat range for it to then uh, hit her. So she gets her recall cancelled and she instantly had the flash because she was definitely trying to recall there, right? But again, now that our blood hunt is just kind of chill, like there's nothing going on, we should simply hit this uh, objective. Just like we did the dragon earlier, just making sure we get the objectives. That is a blood hunt we go for. Very low HP, pretty easy dive. Once again, all we do is respond here, we just move up. Okay, there is a Shivana in this bush though. I would hope to see my... Okay, my Aatrox is not shoving the wave. That is my bad for going too greedy. This is one of those where I kind of assumed he was just going to one-shot the wave and kind of just walk up, but uh, he did no such thing, so that's on me for assuming. The, the, sometimes those things get me for sure, because I'm like, surely you just do this, right? And especially in low elo, that should not be something I expect. We're going to run up here. We're going to run up here because Shivana was topside, and I want to make sure that she doesn't get my topside camps. I also have the blood hunt going everywhere right now. But I am very close to 6. If I was 6 earlier, that would have secured me the kill, but you know. Right, so, that's going to be a relatively tough one at the moment. I'm not really going to go for that. We just have an entire jungle clear up right now, so... It's going to be one that she just shoves that wave and she'll walk away. So if I see a blood hunt, for example, go to bot now, I will go for it. Uh, but in the meantime, well, there is not really anything active blood hunt wise. So we just simply clear our camps. I'm a little bit unhappy with the way I just gave Quinn a big shutdown. That was pretty, pretty I mean, yeah, miscommunication, between, misunderstanding or something between me and Aatrox, I suppose. I really thought he was just going to hard shove the wave with like two Qs, one shoulder, then just walk up, you know? That's, I suppose on me. Too aggressive. Without level 6 there, that's too aggressive for sure. We have nothing on the map for blood hunts, so we are just absolutely reclined, hitting our camps. Put more points into your W, and we move on. Keep clearing your camps the only thing you really have to do also another thing by the way uh, more than half the people who watch my videos aren't actually subscribed so if you are enjoying the content a subscription would be greatly appreciated if you are already subscribed hitting the like button always helps and with that being said uh, let's move on okay so cs is looking pretty good okay this might be an angle where i can get them hit. however nope they died too quickly this is something i just don't get the blood hunt on that because the rotation there they just died too fast to it gonna smite so i can respond to this if they don't get low hp we just click your w by itself if you want to go for the gank gonna fear him into the r i have absolutely zero teammates in that scenario unfortunately that was just one of those where i did what i could because i made sure to like land the fear and off of the fear you want to try to land your r generally speaking because that makes it more consistent I don't know if I survived this, actually. Maybe. Yeah, no, I don't. It, I was like 0.1 second off of getting the uh, the other Q back to make sure I live. But I did not get it back in time. That's okay. It, it was a risky one because I knew I had a chance at surviving it. But it wasn't extremely likely, to be fair. Okay, good. Blood hunt here. We also have the objectives here, right? Like you have to kind of look at the timers here now. Um, you see a bunch of people bot lane, but void grubs will be uh, something I take. My entire top side is up as well, so it's more favorable out of base right now to walk towards top side. First item you're looking to go is Titanic Hydra because this gives you it builds out of Tiamat, which gives you clear speed for your jungle camps. So that is something you're definitely looking for. Now, right now, because of the objective here, I'm just clearing camps until the Void Grubs are going to spawn, so I can actually um, play for those. Secure a nice six Void Grubs. It's very effective for solo queue, especially if you have a strong split pusher like Aatrox. Those champions uh, do well with that. 
Going AD Shivana. Okay, again here, not low enough HP, so we're just gonna manually activate our W instead. I just don't have the uh, the skill cooldowns for it. It's gonna heal a little bit. Oh, a Quinn rotation. I'm blind as well. Might actually have to ult here on four. Oh no, I'm dead. I I got too greedy for my ult there. I didn't want to use it, and then I got Vigor executed. Good rotation from Quinn, to be fair. Unfortunately, the Chivana lived on one. Uh, I mean, Ari could have played that, like, a lot better, but, you know, that is besides the point. I guess I am currently playing a little bit too... Assuming my team will do something type of way, if that makes sense. So that kind of is on me. Should not be doing that too much. I'll, uh, I should, like, realistically, you should be playing safer. If you're not sure if your team is going to play as they as I expect, then, you know. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit unsafe right now. This is okay. I mean, I'll, like, honestly, this is fine. Like, I don't have to play it perfectly here. Like, it's kind of whatever. Like, uh, I, my Blood Hunt is still mostly working. It's all fine. Obviously, I'm going to lose Dragon here, but I'd rather lose one Dragon and have six Void Grubs than have the defense on the Dragon there. Plus, I just died because I made a mistake in mid lane, trying to assume I could do something there. Um, so, yeah, it's just a minus one dragon. Not too worried about it. Okay, this is a good blood hunt. We finish our objective off first, though, and now we're just going to hunt this Vigar down real quick. Walk around it. Don't walk into the stun cage. There's nowhere for him to go here. So the combo you want to do there is auto attack Q Titanic Hydra proc and you get auto attack resets across the board which allows you to easily one shot them with a press the attack proc as you just saw. So and in this situation we have nothing to hunt right now so we're just going to chill on our camps for a second. This is not a problem. Have I died a bit this game? Well yes but that's okay. I think it's better to not fully snowball a game like this. See some mistakes. If you make the mistakes yourself, what to do, you know, that type of stuff. It's all good. I'm just like overestimating my teammates a little bit too much in the, <laughs> in the most for the most part here. That's uh, that's a blood hunt, but I'm not realistically gonna. I mean, I could run up there. I right? don't get me wrong. Right now, we just have, like, red here, so we're just gonna clear red real quick. There's no other gank options at the moment. If we see a good Blood Hunt target, we'll definitely go for it once again. That is a level up. That guy is now very low HP. This will actually be a good target, even if it's... Oh! Okay, fine. That works for me. So the transition blood hunt also works, right? If you have like a blood hunt target on bot lane and you could just run speed run through mid, that could work as well. That is a nice one. Vigor just ended up showing up for it. Built into this. Okay, I could not save him in time, unfortunately. Ah, that works. Right here, like the ult basically just either try to secure it with like um, fearing a target first. So you can like Q, like run at the target, Q hold dash through the target and then proc your fear off that and then ult them. That is a very consistent way of doing it. You can also ult from a distance if you are assuming a target's pathing correctly. Like in that situation, the Aatrox was running down. Shivana was going to run down with him pretty much regardless. So I can just ult straight into the direction where the Shivana was about to run to kill the Aatrox and I can land my ult from a distance. Pretty much guaranteed. That ult was never really going to miss. So that's like the two ways of like looking at the, how you want to use ult. You can obviously like for the most consistency, just use it with your fear for like certain catches where you might have to save a teammate or, you know, something like a pathing that is almost guaranteed. You can just ult up front and be fine as well. Okay, so this Quinn is definitely going to look for the Ari on mid lane here. So we're just going to rotate over to make sure she doesn't get this gank. That is fine. No blood on targets. Our camps are up, so we're simply just going to hit some camps for a bit. As soon as we see a nice target appear, we'll be fine. Getting some very good money here as well. Let's see if any targets get low anytime soon. If I see like a nice blood hunt target on bot, I can like transition that through mid with a gank and kill the Vigar, which is a very nice way of doing things. 
So like the transition blood hunts are also very good. We're just kind of looking at all of them. See what's possible. Uh, let me just real quick. How much money do I need? Okay. Okay, so for the build, I'm just going to go over this real quick. Titanic Hydra is your first item. Pretty much guaranteed because it gives you the TM at clear speed. It's just a very solid item to go for. So I definitely recommend Titanic first. Now, second item, you have some options. Okay, this is a reaction because Blood Hunt, obviously. So we just move. I'll continue my thought process here in a second. Don't worry about it. Fear. And he's dead. Perfect. We have money, so it's going to back. Okay, so Titanic Hydra will be first. After this, you can go one of two items. Um, you can go either Blade of the Rune King, which is what I'm going for right now, or you can go Sundered Sky. Sundered Sky would be the best option against this team comp specifically, but Blade of the Rune King is always good, if that makes sense. Like, it will never be a bad purchase. So if you're not sure, just go Blade of the Rune King. Sundered Sky, because they're full squish, is a very, very good item. It, like, the, the, the value of Blade of the Rune King drops a little bit the more squishy the, the enemies are. React to the Blood Hunt, obviously. That will be fine. That was either going to hit the Smolder or the Seraphine. Going to smite here real quick. Pull the Q down. Finish him off. Perfect. There you go. So that was one of those guaranteed ultimates. Like I either... Um, either I hit somebody here or I dash past them. So I'm behind them and that way they get caught off and die anyway. So it doesn't matter. Like I've, if, even if I miss it there, it'll be fine. Yeah, for the build, um, it's going to be Titanic Hydra into Sundered Sky. If the enemy team is full squish like this, that would be good. If the enemy team is like relatively tanky, Blender Rune King quickly becomes better. And if the enemy team is very tanky, Sunder Sky is really bad compared to Blender Rune King, so then you should definitely not do it. But that's why I'm going for Blender the Rune King here, because it's always a solid item. It's never like it's not always the best in slot item to pick up, but it's always solid to the point where it'd be worth going for, if that makes sense. Got the Blood Hunt here. Uh, do I want a flash for that guy? Probably not. That's okay. But oh, this is warded, I see. The reason I see that's warded is because the minions still auto-attack me in the bush. Eh, yeah, fine. Screw you. I'll, I'll flash for you then. Alright, ult at the edge and then heal myself back up and we're good. So Flash, Fear, Auto Attack, Q, Titanic, Hydra, Proc for the hit, and then he just died. And I shoved the tier 2 on mid. I guess I was just gonna... Nope, they have that. We should be fine. Don't miss up, mess up the Herald, please. Thank you. I was about to run down there, but I, that wasn't necessary. Just hit this down, click this thing, and then dash it to the side first and curve it around so you can hit the next turret. Q the minions for a bit of sustain here. Gonna get this turret down. We have the six Void Gobs as well, so the pushing power is very good. I'm not gonna go kill this inhibitor right now, because they're respawning, so the death timers are very close. Um, so, like, fighting them here with home guards coming up is not gonna be too good. And killing the inhibitor is also not very good uh, right now, because the enemy team gets them perma shove into mid wave, and it doesn't really get abused very well, especially in low elo. Uh, so, I just don't want to give him free farm for the entire game. Kind of what it comes down to. If you have killed the enemy jungler, if you're like in an aggressive position, always try to clean the enemy jungler's camps as much as you can. You want to always deny the enemy jungler as many camps as possible. It's a very good thing to think about. Ooh. I should actually kind of respect my position here. It's not amazing. We see a blood hunt potential on, on uh, going towards mid here. Auto attack, Q, Titanic, Hydra proc. Nice and easy. You see, I've instantly proc to press the attack of that as well. Okay, someone's there in base. Can use a bit of the movement speed here to loop in behind this Seraphine. Damage reduction. Auto attack Q. And then I was about to Titanic Harder proc, but the guy died. So we're kind of chilling. As you can see, like, I have 15 kill participation on a 19. And pretty much all I did was just react to my blood hunt for the most part, right? Didn't really do anything else. And if like, was, I was in the vicinity for a potential gank situation because I just ended up clearing towards it at like a decent pace, but the enemy wasn't low, I just manually activate my W instead to, try to, to reach the target at that point, which is just very chill. Now here to follow this uh, situation up item-wise, there are several items you can go at this point. 
Uh, so you're looking at tank items usually, right? So you want to look at what is going to be good against the enemy team. This will be a burn mage. This is a ma ma magic damage. Here is some magic damage as well. So mostly magic damage first. So it's pretty much recommended to go for an MR item first. Um, the best MR item for Warwick, usually speaking, will be a Spirit Visage because it increases your healing uh, like directly. And Warwick has a tremendous amount of healing in his kit. So that's what we're going to go for first. And then as an armor item, um, you can go several options. Usually, I like going Thormill like as like a default thing. So if you're not sure what you're going to go for, just go for Thormill. The reason usually Thormill is the default is because it, one, gives healing reduction, but it also gives reflect damage. And the reflect damage part of it is quite big because then if you get hit, if you sustain through the hits with your healing, um, then they'd have to constantly hit you and they take damage at the same time. Okay, so we're just going to blood hunt towards the fight here. I was looping around to see if Vygar was going to like shove a wave or something. Can I? Do I want to do this? This is going to be a 1v5. I'll send it. It's fine. Build to get in range. Cute Titanic Hydra proc. Proc the E so I have some damage reduction for a bit. Chase the targets one by one. Don't split up your damage. This is very important. Always try to focus on the same targets properly. Okay, so she just recalled, and we saw the smolder in range, so we're just going to activate our W because he's not within the other range, so we just activate W to chase. Good flash. That, I didn't get my Q hold off in time. I wanted to follow his flash there. We're just going to chase him because we know exactly where he is. He is a little bit quick, and I now have my W on cooldown, unfortunately, which does tick down, so he's going to die, but it's still fine, you know. That's a little bit annoying as well. Good you could juke, buddy, but it doesn't matter because now you're low HP against the Warwick, so we just chase anyway. Yeah, running away from a Warwick's kind of impossible. I'm not gonna lie. Like it's it's definitely just the on the factor of impossible. It's gonna go mid here. If he gets him low, that's great. He doesn't get him low, so we're just gonna manually activate our W again to get the blood hunt anyway. Auto attack Q Titanic Hydra proc. That is not going to be something I go for because currently we have a big objective here and we want to take the objective first. So that is what we're currently looking for. Uh, auto attack the dragon, then hold your Q. Uh, as it jumps up, it will negate the knockback, which is quite nice. Okay, so we're going to focus here. We have 1200 on this. It's going to try to, once it gets to about there, we just Q smite. So you get that. I have 1900 for my... Uh, for my Thornmill right now, for my next item. So we're actually just going to clear our bot side camps real quick. They hit level 16 to get the item upgrade. And then we have a nice back. So if you're getting close to an item, I will just definitely like kind of go for it here. Always at this stage in the game as well, don't waste your smite on your camps anymore. You kill them very quickly. If you have two charges, you can, but you kind of have to make sure that uh, you have the smite ready for a big objective like Baron. Okay. So we are just clearing, but we see the Blood Hunt activate, so we are going to react to a Blood Hunt potentially. Again, once again, like pretty chill. Move over this way, he gets to engage there. Go through with R. I'm just going to use my Q there for a second. Fear him and just hit him down, as you can see. Like I, I'm just holding Q, getting through him, getting a better position. And we just react to the Blood Hunt once again in that situation. We were planning on recalling, but the Blood Hunt takes priority, so we just go for that, right? Pretty chill. Now we're just going to focus on this turret. This turret's worth 700 gold. Both of these tier 2 side turrets are worth 700 gold if you kill them within like the range, so I'm definitely going to go for that. Look at that beautiful 700 gold right there. And now we have 3,600 gold. We definitely don't want to stick around the map. The enemy team is now all going to respawn soon as well. So I'm just going to take the reset now. Go for the Thorn Mill. And uh, yeah, should be good. Now, last item here. You have some. You have several options. I The one I like the most right now is just going for Warmorks. Uh, the reason Warmorks is the one I go for is because it, it gives you 15% movement speed out of combat. Which just synergizes insanely well with obviously your Blood Hunt. Uh, and also it gives you the uh, health regeneration so if you go into a fight take a tremendous amount of damage and survive the fight on like 20 percent let's say you just have to stay out of the fight for like a little bit of time and then you just heal everything back in no time so right here we have blood hunt so again we react pretty much instantly my team kind of overextended there a little bit but you know that's good enough for me good day seraphine 
That's a little bit annoying. Ult goes through Viger Cage because it's not stoppable, so it's fine. I can just ult through the Viger Cage. What? Yo, excuse me. Why did my Titanic Hydro Proc not go off? Are you serious? Okay, damage reduction. I can't walk through the Viger Cage because I would get stunned. It's better for me to just not get stunned and move away. Now, this is where Warmox would kick in. I took a lot of damage here, so Warmox would now regenerate me back all the way to full while just doing nothing. Because the passive will just regenerate my HP by a lot. But because we don't have that yet, we're just going to go hit a camp real quick to get our HP back from that. Also hitting the red buff here, obviously, to get the red buff. We have good healing. 2300 gold for the uh, for the Warmox right now. Again, right here, I'm just denying Shivana camps. Like, this is just a consistent thing you want to do. My own camps don't really matter in this game. The only reason you'd be clearing your own camps is if there's no, like, other option, really. But as you can see now, because we're pushing forward, I'm just making sure I clear as many of Shivana's camps as possible. I don't really have to, as Warwick, like, think about anything, because all I need to do is just react to the Blood Hunt. Like, you can make proactive plays if you want, but if your team gets engaged in any type of form, you just react to the Blood Hunt. In the meantime, you just deny the enemy jungler all their camps so they cannot farm back in, or farm in this game whatsoever. And they'll have no chance at, like, doing anything anymore. There's the Blood Hunt. That is the target. We go for that target. That's fine. There we go. Yo, excuse... How are you not dead? I'm now blind because I... So, sorry, I can't smite the guy. That's Oh, and I've missed my smite click as well. Lovely. And yeah, that was absolutely great. You're not going to kill me. It's fine. But this is where Warmox again would kick in. That was about the worst thing. Like, I couldn't smite the guy because I got blinded by Quinn. <laughs> Dude, like, come on. Are you serious? I'm just gonna take the reset, honestly. Currently, I have the Warmox, and if the Blood Hunt remains on the map, I'll be out of base very, very quickly. So I can abuse the Blood Hunt right now. Like, they're low HP, so I'm basically just abusing my, pa my Blood Hunt passive to run out of base at, like, insane speeds. So this is a very nice tactic you can apply. This Quinn is most likely going to look for this. Yes, obviously, there is what we expected. Kill him. We just Baron now. Actually, we do not Baron here. We definitely go Dragon. A Dragon Soul will always take priority over Baron. There is no question. If you have a, a Dragon Soul able to take, take the Dragon Soul. It's better. It's stronger. It's always going to be there. Even if you lose one Baron for it, a Drake Soul will be there for the rest of the game. So it will be better. Auto attack. Q hold. Go through it without getting knocked back. And now that we have Warmox, we are going to be super chilling. Like, this is going to be so nice. Smite the objective, obviously. So, Blood Hunts are going to be hard to find. We can just use a random W. Okay, this guy is just casually standing here, I guess. Sure. Goodbye. I think he may, may have given up, perhaps. Who knows? That doesn't really do anything, Vigar. I could technically ult him there, but I'm currently not sure where his team is at, and I don't want to go in a 1v4. While I might be able to win a 1v4, the Quinn blind is highly annoying. Like, I can't see anything with that. Okay, so now we're kind of A-ramming, which is not the best strategy, so I definitely don't really want to go for that. I'd just rather go for a Baron. Just go for any objective, really. I'm just going to sweep there, so I know if they're going to walk in. There he is. Q hold fear he flashed that's fine we ult after him doesn't matter really there if i hit it i just ult for range at that point and uh, now the only situation is because he was literally one hp i used my smite so i don't really want to go for a baron now because my smite's now on an 80 second cooldown uh, so i'd rather just go for the way for the bot turret could react to the fight but getting like the bot turret out of here is very nice i'm actually gonna just do this first and then we react to the fight get this out of the way and now they can't do anything I mean, they're never going to kill me. Like, this is just a massive joke. You threw Fear behind and just hit him down. I'm a, I'm a bit tanky, you know? And all I really did was just like, oh, Blood Hunt goes off. Yeah, lovely. We take those. <laughs> That's all I did. The, the strategy is pretty good. I'm just going to hit this down. I'm down to try try to take a fight, to be honest. I mean, it might be resulting in my death because it's going to be a 1v4, but... Good cleanse. Interesting. This is not necessarily a problem because Aatrox is just shoving top, so I'm more than happy to, to play with them here a bit. 
And we're just gonna abuse Warmox now as well. So we lost like half our HP bar, yes. And then we have Warmox now. So as you can see, our HP is going up incredibly quickly. Plus we got the 50% movement speed boost, obviously, from the uh, from the Warmox in total, which is insanely good. So we're just running around the map faster as well. So that's the nice part about Warmox, because uh, now I'm just back to full HP. There's not much they can do here. Best play is just to go Baron here. As Warwick, you can just solo the Baron as well, if you'd like. I think I'll just start and see what happens, I guess. Force the enemy to go here or something. Yeah, I took this aggression fight, not necessarily because I thought I was going to win a 1v4, uh, but more so because Aatrox was just, sho was just shoving top lane, and as soon as they have to respond to my 1v4, it's going to be an issue for them. We just ult over. Because we want to just kill them instead of trying to force a 50-50 smite on the Baron, we just go for the kill. Try to kill anyone, make the fight much harder on them to engage. Ideally, your team keeps the Baron aggro if they can, but in this case, they couldn't. Okay. I was about to activate my W manually, but then the, the guy got him low enough anyway. Just kill the jungler as fast as possible, and then we just simply focus on the objective. In this situation, I had the primary target for Viger, so let's get rid of the Viger real quick. But the jungler is always the prior target, because that means you will have a free objective after the jungler dies. Uh, since, obviously, the jungler has the smite and makes that... Uh, yeah the easiest thing to go for I guess like that because then they would not have a way to contest it anymore there are very few champions in the game that can out smite a smite like Jogath ult for example would be one of them uh, you know now if you get this far into your build the boots are kind of unnecessary because the movement speed you get from the warmox alongside just your W and the relentless hunter you have um kind of made your boots a bit redundant so one of the items I like going for on this would be Overlord's Blood Mill the reason I like this is because it gives... I have a lot of HP build, right? And this gives a lot of bonus attack damage based on your bonus health. And you gain the extra attack damage based on your missing health. So you're going to be stronger as you get lower. So this is an option you can go for. If you feel like you need more resistances, something like a Jock Show will do great as well. Because that will just give you way more resistances against both. But I think I'm fine. So we're just going to go Overlord's Blood Mill here. And then we'll build the Elixir of Iron for the extra movement speed. Path thing for my team to potentially chase. Like you could go Red Pult, but you have plenty of sustain as it is, so you're not really worried about that. I have 5.6k HP, so I'm kind of chilling there as well. And we're just going to go in. At this point, I just want to show... I'm just going to go for the strength of Warwick. Go in. We just ult. Get the fear off of the other target there. And I'm just going to walk forward for the rest of this game. The game is pretty much over. Like, I can do literally whatever I want. There's nothing they can do against me. But yeah, this would be an absolute maxed out version of a build. So, yeah, there's nothing else to really achieve here. Showed you uh, pretty much the entire strategy. And now we're just going to walk forward and hit the turret. Got some damage reduction from the E in there. Taking damage here is absolutely negligible, again, because of Warmog. So I can just force aggro the turret there. And I'm just dis I can just disengage the fight for a couple seconds. And there's nothing they can do. Okay, I cannot reach that guy, apparently. I'm just going to flash Q because he's just dead off that. Okay, so I'm now half HP. It is just a Quinn, so I don't really have to worry too much, but I can just chill for a second, walk out of combat here, and as you can see, my Warmox will now heal me back. So no matter the HP I would be at, I could do that as a strategy to uh, heal myself back and make it impossible for them to fight me. I'll just go for the ult on this guy. Not dead. You are literally 1 HP, though, but we're just going to hit the Nexus turret, or the Nexus itself, and you're good. Uh, so yeah, that's the entire strategy. If you have any questions, be sure to leave those below. That'll help. Uh, I'll help you out wherever I can. And with that being said, that was it for Warwick. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the endgame stats. All right, so for the endgame stats here, I ended up doing 43.3k damage, which is a very nice amount, of course. The most not very surprising in this game situation. Uh, true damage, 1300. Objective damage at 80k. Again, like, take, taking the objectives whenever I could. Like, the Void Grubs... The dragons, whenever I was like in the range, I'd always keep an eye out on the timer of the objectives. Because you can play around the entire W strategy very consistently, very easily, right? Absolutely do. Get from free kills, get good kills, but try to always make sure you get the objectives as well. As much as you possibly can, at least, because those objectives are very important to make sure that the mid to late game goes consistently in your favor. If you get all those kills, but then the enemy team can constantly get all the objectives, then they're getting stronger as a team and stronger as a team as it goes on. And it can get very difficult at that point to then win games, especially by yourself. Uh, so 
objectives are important to make sure like the the progression of your the strength of your team increases as you go along and the strength of the enemy team doesn't constantly increase and as you saw as well this goes on uh, like hand in hand with me denying the enemy jungler a tremendous amount of camps as the game went on like as we were pressing forward i was constantly still using the w for the hunt thing but then instead of clearing my own camps, I was clearing Shivana's camps instead. So this way you can press the advantage by taking the objective and taking the enemy jungler's camps. So it'd be very hard for them to do anything. Um, healing done, 38k. We have damage taken at 56.7, which is more than double the rest of them, which is very good. Just good at engages, frontlining, etc. Self-mitigate another 103.5, which is obviously a very, very huge amount. Uh, so the total damage taken is approximately 160,000 damage taken, which is like... I don't know, like 3x the rest of my team, something like that. Four, maybe. Uh, so, you know, very, very good there. Gold earned at 22.7k. This is obviously due to the large amount of kills that I had by just using the Bloodhunt uh, W passive to get kills because they disrespected me across the board. But also just consistently CSing, like making sure I get my camps at like a reasonable tempo while I'm waiting for the Bloodhunt, that type of stuff. Don't just hunt for kills. Definitely try to keep a decent pace in your camps, and then eventually when you press forward enough, keep a decent pace in the enemy's camps. Try to take their camps consistently, and then that way you can create a massive gold lead to make yourself very strong. Uh, for the runes, press the attack dealt 3260 damage. I'm not sure if this is all the damage, because the exposed damage I don't think is literally zero, so it probably did maybe a bit more, but still 3200 damage is very good. Uh, triumph for 3800 HP, 700 extra gold, which is nice. Uh, the Legend Haste for the Ability Haste, you can take the attack speed, however I value the Ability Haste a bit more because I think getting an extra E up faster or getting an extra Q up faster um, in the middle of a fight when you are already gaining attack speed from your W passive is just a bit more significant, so that's why I like the Haste more than I like the attack speed, but the attack speed would be a solid option as well. We take the last stand for the bonus damage in closer fights. Uh, this just helps you win out, especially on those early game fights, because you see I only did 578 damage with this, because I wasn't getting low HP anymore later in the game, right? Because my build was very tanky, I was very ahead, and my healing was good, so I wasn't getting bursted below the threshold for last time to be valuable. However, in the early game, in those closer fights, having the extra damage to be able to inch them out is very, very good for the last stand, which then allows you to snowball into the later stages of the game, where the rune will matter less, but if you're fat enough, strong enough, the damage from this will not really matter at all. So that's the option. You can go coup de gras, you can go cut down if you'd like, but I'd recommend Lost Stand to win the early game fights the most, and then you can snowball from there. Then going with that, we go Relentless Hunter. We do not go Celerity on Water Walking, because Relentless Hunter is more consistent movement speed increase of 11%, which is just very nice. It just is better. It has like a 3% higher win rate over Celerity Water Walking, so there is that, and then you just take Eyeball Collection for the extra stats with that. Builds maxed out, explain the build in the game. So with that being said, that was it for this one, and I'll see you guys tomorrow with another video. Bye.